know that feeling? When the air leaves your body. I started my videography and filmmaking journey by shooting cars. Never would I thought I would be given the chance to shoot a car commercial for a well-known brand. With the opportunity to have full access to an electric vehicle and given free reign to create a commercial we wanted to do, I knew that this was something I didn't want to miss out on. But with no budget and access to a car in a city that doesn't have the best views to shoot cars, the challenges and hurdles started to pile up. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we shot this car commercial and go over my step-by-step -step process as a cinematographer. The first thing when approaching any commercial is understanding what you want it to feel and look like. This commercial was targeted at an electric vehicle and we wanted it to be connected to nature as well as target the audience of people who would drive them. This step is the most important in the pre-production process because it will dictate all the decisions you make as a cinematographer from lighting, equipment, and most importantly, how you actually will shoot the project. At this point in my process, I like to ask the director specific questions and find keywords like slow motion, slow shutter, specialty shots, macros, textures, and dynamic movement. We compile references in terms of what I like and what Jason, the director, likes and move from there in terms of what visual story we want to create. Other than the video references, there are many other resources that allow you to visualize a project. Frameset is a fantastic resource with a diverse amount of filters that you can dial in exactly what you're looking for. You can find out more in the link in our bio and use code Tenfold Production for 10% off on your first year. After finding out our references and finalizing a look for the project, we wanted to decide on what camera as well as what extra rigging we needed to shoot this project. When it comes to shooting car commercials, especially ones with zero budget, it comes difficult to spend money on rental equipment because it's needed to shoot car commercials. We can't just show up to the location with a gimbal and another car and shoot out a window and hope for the best. We wanted to bring this commercial to the highest level with our means and the connections that we have. We shot this commercial using the Arri Alexa Mini paired with the Leica R vintage lenses in addition to Aria Laura 15 to 45 millimeter zoom. In addition to that, we had a red Komodo that we captured some additional shots on, but few made the cut. The reason why we chose the Aria Alexa Mini because if we were gonna shoot a car commercial once, we wanted to do it right, and we knew that we couldn't do this with our in-house red kits. We have connections with local rental houses and they were willing to work with our budget for the three day rental period, and the AC of the project owns the Leica lenses, so that helped as well. We used the primes for the majority of the project and the zoom was used to add flexibility when we're shooting the rolling shots of the car. In addition to the camera, we rented a Ronin 2 to support the RE Mini and reached out to our friend Nick, who specializes in car-to-car -car capture as well as rigging in general. He sorted out an SUV as well as a black arm that we use for this project. This is an important lesson when doing things out of your comfort zone. Just reach out to people who specialize in certain aspects of production. Sure, I knew how to shoot cars and I knew what equipment I needed to reach out in terms of rental houses, but I had so many other things to focus on. Having one person showing up with a car rigged and ready to go saved us so much time and ultimately brought this commercial together. The biggest challenge when shooting any car commercial is finding a location, and a proper one at that. Ontario and Toronto specifically is not the best for scenic views as well as paved roads. It's a hilly region of Canada that doesn't have a lot of interest and we need to figure something out. That's where Mike Ricci comes in, who was our main talent as well as the one who supplied us with the location for this project. Through Mike, we had access to a 200 acre property filled with a man-made pond, twisting dirt roads, a well-kept forest area, and a lookout point that overlooked the sunset. For Jason and I, this was a perfect location to pull this commercial off, as it was in nature and the surrounding roads near the property were well paved and good enough to shoot on. We took a day and drove out to the location and toured the property and I used an app called CadRage to take pictures of each of the shooting locations with the intended camera and lenses I wanted to shoot the project on. This is a fantastic resource and app I use on every shoot. And if you put the location scout pictures side by side of what we shot, you can see we already had a good idea of what the project was going to look like just from the scout. This whole process allowed us to properly shot list each location and not have any guessing game when we actually showed up on location and we knew exactly where to place our camera. This gives me so much confidence as a cinematographer walking into a location and knowing exactly what focal length and camera position I need to get the shots that we want. In addition to visualizing with a camera, the next thing I do is use an app called Sunseeker to see where the sun will be in each location. As I knew this was an outdoor run and gun commercial, I knew that I didn't have any time to light anything specifically or even modify the sun with any diffusion. Knowing where the sun is exactly at each location allowed me to plan where we had to be at each day and what specific time. For example, the last shot of the piece is on a lookout. 
And from the location scout, we saw that the sun would be setting in the background. So this was the last shot of the day for the production. And we worked backwards to schedule out the rest of the days so we could end up there as the sun was setting. With all that information, we moved on to scheduling out each day. And now we can finally look at how we shot this. The first day of production was a half day because we had to pick up and prep all the gear in addition to driving up to the property, which was two hours away from the city. As this was a very low budget project, Jason and I picked up all the gear and prepped it at an Airbnb we were staying at with the main talent and creative director, Andrew. A very important thing when shooting any outdoor project is maximizing your time in terms of when the lighting looks the best. So this can mean the sunset and sunrise. And because we were shooting two full days and one half day, we would utilize three sunsets and two sunrises. Once we got to the Airbnb, I prepped the camera with the zoom lens and then we left for the valley location, which was 10 minutes away where we could catch an amazing sunset. For this first day, the camera crew was just Jason and I, and I had to move quick into knowing exactly what the shots I wanted. And this meant I was pulling my own focus. Just before sun was setting, Andrew, the creative director of the project, grabbed some amazing stills of the car so we could have a full rollout in terms of photo and video for this commercial. As the sun started to set, this is where we moved in and grabbed a wide and tight of the car going through the valley. After that, we wanted to show off the features of the car, so we shot the front grille turning on as well as the taillights. This was at blue hour and going into the night, and this gave us some of the best looking shots of the piece. In addition to that, I knew that we needed some transitional footage to play with in post, so I did a bunch of whips in front of the taillights as well as the headlights, and they really worked well for the edit. With some amazing footage captured, we were pretty excited for day two. Waking up at 5 a.m. for any project is not fun, especially if you're going to do it for two days in a row. But with a vision and a team that supports you, it feels like you can achieve anything. We arrived at our first location to cast some rolling shots of the car, with the sun rising up in the back. This was a stretch of highway with four lanes and a closed diner where we could pull in and prep. So this worked out great. We got our temporary camera car ready to go and got the main shot that we were looking for. In addition to this, we captured a lot of textures of the road as well as trees passing by. We moved on to the next location and prepped the mini on the black arm with the Ronin 2 and went through the winding roads and got some variation of rolling shots. This included passbys, chasing shots from front and behind, and any other scenery that we can get in this location. We took a break for lunch, and at this time it was high sun. That means we can't even backlight the car to get any of the good looking car shots. So this was a time that we took for lunch as well as just recovery in terms of the morning that we had. This is the time where we took the plan one of the most technical shots in the piece. We planned this due to the nature of two roads intersecting in an open field. We saw this as an opportunity as a perfect place to have some variety in the edit in terms of being in front or behind the car. With so many variables such as car speed, focus, and controlling the gimbal, we only had a few shots to get it right. And when we did, everyone in the crew was excited and it was a great morale boost for such a long day so far. We finished up the day with some additional shots in the forest, some rolling shots as the sun was setting, and a campfire scene. During the location scout, we actually looked around the property to see what additional scenes that we could do with our talent besides the car. And this was this campfire scene that we have this with the fire pit, as well as a lean-to garage that we could shoot the camera through in terms of this frame within the frame. With a tired crew and some amazing footage, that was a wrap on day two, and we were excited to get some much needed sleep. With 16 V-mount batteries to charge and multiple terabytes of footage to back up, it was an unrested morning as I had to set my alarm multiple times during the night to make sure that we would be ready for the morning. And this is just the reality of shooting commercials in such a remote area with such a small crew. But with little sleep and a lot of ambition, we are all excited to get on the last day of production underway. We started the day with the sunrise scene as if our main character was entering the property for the first time. This was visualized through the opening of the gate and driving off into the distant sunrise. When we packed up from that specific scene and moved on to the next location, we were very surprised in terms of what was waiting for us. A layer of fog covered the man-made pond, and we knew that we had to capitalize on this and move quickly. It's important in these situations to get excited, but remember the plan so you don't lose sight of what shots you need to get. I started off with one lens and we moved through this entire shot list in the location, prioritizing all the shots with the pond in the background first, because I knew the natural haze was not going to last. We got everything that we needed and more, and then we met up with the rest of the crew and it's another 
forest area to get some pickup shots. This location we focused on the main talent and we wanted to capture him experiencing nature. So this meant a lot of breathing, textures, and him moving through spaces. After that, we used the FX3 to get some specialty shots of the car. This just included rigging the car to the camera in addition to doing some slow shutter options for use for transitions in the piece. Things were looking and feeling great at this point and we move on to the last location of this production ahead of schedule. It's at this point in any production I am the most excited. The team is flowing and everyone is feeding off of everybody's good energy. We set up a series of last shots as the sun was setting and that was a wrap on Tenfold's first car commercial. I think the best part of shooting a high level commercial for cars like this is it's completely different for us. We kind of bring everything from our other commercial world into this and we get to try new things. So there's like rolling car shots, location scouting in different spaces that are unique to us. There's a lot more challenges and excitement when it comes to projects like this. We have a smaller crew, so you're always just juggling a lot of different things and everyone's moving all hands at once. So making sure that everyone's morale is good, making sure everyone knows what's coming up next so we can plan ahead for that. Uh, I think my favorite shot was this converging forest shot. I think it's gonna turn out great. It's gonna be one of the like, key milestone shots for this whole project. So we're excited to see how it all comes together. Uh, I think from a lot of the work that we do, we tend to focus more on the technical stuff. So sometimes it's more textural with the car stuff, it's more beauty. So making sure the car looks perfect all the time and balancing the timing with making sure it's clean because this was an EV car too we had to do charges in between so balancing those challenges but really just making sure everyone's on the same page from the talent to the crew everyone knows what's coming up next even though there's some thrown in shots that are unique and I think everyone did a great job today so we have a good balance there everyone knows each other everyone knows how we speak and how we kind of operate and so we can flow faster together and that's kind of like the benefits of knowing everyone on set and bringing on the same people all the time all the days went pretty well but the most stressful day was day two the first day was more of a tech scout figuring out all the locations if they work we actually scrapped a lot of different locations and kind of repivoted and rejoined our schedule but the second day was the most stressful because we were trying a lot of new things, like balancing a Mini with a Fujinon lens on a car rig is no small ordeal. So it was a lot of trial and error and then also trying and successing. So we're pretty happy with the shots that we got. And I would say this day went pretty well as well. Just a lot of more people focus and also perching the car up in a lot of beauty spots and then just getting those classic car commercial shots that you see on posters and everything like that. Tenfold has like a different approach to the commercials that we create and the creative that we want to push. If you look at a classic car commercial, even with people in it, there's a lot of them doing activities or a lot of focus on what the car is doing as well. This is more an artistic piece, but we did shoot a lot of those classic shots just to have them so we could use them later to resell in terms of pitching different sides. But for us, we like to push the artistic realm and the more creative realm, and that's what we love to do and that's our style. So it was kind of a balance between the beautiful car stuff as well as telling a story. Because I find a lot of these car commercials, the story is the same. Somebody gets in a car, they're driving, they feel good, and that's about it. We kind of want to go more into that story aspect of a car commercial. There's just so much work and there's a lot that can go wrong, but there's also a lot that can go right. Obviously, I'm fulfilled in terms of what we shot and how this is going to come together because I know the people that we have on it are going to absolutely kill it. But just the days that we had and the amount of time that you need that you definitely underestimate. Like we scheduled one day just to do all the car to car shots. So they're just very stressful because again a lot of things can go wrong. I would say honestly the last shot we did was my favorite shot. We were perched up on a ladder. I always like to get different perspectives. We got actually a lot of different perspectives from high height. Usually like to shoot like that just because I don't see a lot of people doing it. And then just in terms of how mean this car looks from the front with the lights and everything, it was just a great showcase of it with the beautiful sunset we have here and pushing into the blue hour and showing off the car in its best light. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another breakdown on how we shot a frame set commercial, I have a video queued up here for you.